Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Afternoon, colleagues. I want to give thanks and praise, Mr. Speaker, for another opportunity to represent the people that I serve, Shows Al Saldibas. And I'm Mr. Speaker, I'm grateful for another day to be in the land of the living. Mr. Speaker, before I commence my contribution to the budget debate, I wish to take the opportunity to express condolences to the family of Mr. Edwin Lambert Smith of Saltibus, who is not only a friend, but he was a family and who played a significant role when I entered the political arena in 2016. Um, in fact, Mr. Speaker, I should indicate to you that I would be leaving a little early tomorrow to attend the funeral as I have been assigned a particular role um, in, in, the, in the celebration of his life. Mr. Speaker, I am sure you have experienced what is called an aha moment. It's a, an aha moment. It's a moment of certain insight you know, or, or, or discovery. Um, and I'm sure many of us in this room have discovered these moments when we listen to lectures, conversations. And Mr. Speaker, I'm sure in your professional capacity as a loss adjuster, these moments have come to you. Well, Mr. Speaker, my aha moment came when I could not get a particular line of a song out of my head while listening to various aspects of the budget address. The line, Mr. Speaker, comes from a song of the great Robert Nestor Marley from his album, Exodus. And the line, Mr. Speaker, reads, guiltiness rests on their conscience. Mr. Speaker, later in my presentation, I will provide you with an insight as to why parts of the budget may have invoked this line. Mr. Speaker, I will quick, be quick to admit, however, that there are aspects of the budget that I support and I look forward to the implementation and will also advise accordingly. Mr. Speaker, in my short political career, I must make an admission, and that is the St. Lucia Labour Party, as a government and in opposition, are masters in political marketing. In other words, Mr. Speaker, they are masters in influencing people votes in elections. I am tempted, Mr. Speaker, to refer to this budget as an election budget. Mr. Speaker, the members on the opposite side have proven to say one thing while in opposition, and when in government, say and do otherwise. And Mr. Speaker, you don't have to go very far. Mr. Speaker, just take a look at the theme for this year's budget address. Building our infrastructure for a resilient economy. Mr. Speaker, I can assure you, had this government not stopped various works when they came into office, the theme of this budget could have read, maintaining a resilient economy by advancing our infrastructure. Mr. Speaker, I wish to turn your attention to page 55 of the 2023 Economic and Social Review. Fifty-five, yes. And Mr. Speaker, I will be reading some excerpts from 55 to 57, but I will advise you as I skip accordingly. Mr. Speaker, under revenue performance, it reads, it reads, the central government's revenue and grant receipts trended upward for the third consecutive year to a high of 1,427,800,000 in 2324, largely due to an improvement in tax revenue. 
Total revenue on grants increased by 8.2% relative to 22-23 and represented an estimate 21.4% of GDP. This positive outturn reflected the continued expansion in domestic activity, further price increases, and the implementation of revenue enhancement policy measures. Mr. Speaker, I challenge the Prime Minister and members opposite to defy that that upward trend had nothing to do with productivity, but everything to do with consumption. No, not at all, Chief, not at all. Mr. Speaker, you turn the page to page 56, current revenue. In keeping with the growth in economic activity and higher prices, current revenue rose by 9% to 1,353.5 1 million, million in 23-24, the highest to date. This outturn was attributed to sizable increase in tax revenue by 113.1 million. Next line which speaks to tax revenue. Tax revenue continued to grow in 23-24, albeit at a decelerated pace of 10.1% to 1 billion 231.4 million. Sustained growth in economic activity and further increases in prices led to higher collections from most taxes, coupled with the introduction of the 2.5% health and citizen security levy on selected import goods and domestic services while VAT revenue collected by the Inland Revenue Department rose by 23.1 million, collections by the Customs and Excise Department net of refunds fell by 1.7 million. Mr. Speaker, I will compound on what I'm reading, but I just want to read everything right away. The next paragraph, receipts from taxes on international trade and transactions rose by 8.2% to 614.1 million, contributing 41.3% of the increased tax in, increase in tax revenue in 23-24. Excise tax collections on imports rose significantly by 51.3% to a peak of 119.1 million. This strong performance was occasioned by an almost doubling of excise tax receipts on petroleum products to 68.7 million, owing to higher excise tax rates and larger volumes coupled with lower subsidy, lower subsidy on LPG cooking gas. The next page, Mr. Speaker, well, we're continuing. The excise tax rates on gasoline and diesel per gallon rose from an average of $2.56, $2.56, and $1.69, respectively, in 22-23, to $3.64 and $3.90 in 23-24, respectively. The 20 pound subsidy decreased from 19.24 per cylinder in 22-23 to 16.16 in 23-24. Excise tax receipts from non-fuel imports were also strengthened by 6.2 million to 50.5 million in 23-24. This outturn reflected higher import values of alcohol and the approximate doubling of excise tax rates on tobacco, tobacco from August 2023. The new health and citizen security levy charge on the value of imports from August 2023 generated $12.7 million in 23-24. Mr. Speaker, I continue. Mr. Speaker, I highlight these lines from the economic and social revenue and social review, sorry, to indicate something that we have been speaking about throughout the year and last year, and that is the government had the ability to reduce on the price of gas and diesel at the pumps for St. Lucians and decided against that, but rather to collect as much revenue as possible, Mr. Speaker, to address their own, their own, their own, their own reasons, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, and we know, Mr. Speaker, that, the, and, and this is really and truly, Mr. Speaker, one of my aha moments, because the government, in recognizing the pain and suffering as a result of the direct consequences of the health and security levy, 
the refusal to lower gas prices, and the obvious consequences of increased cost of doing business. Obviously, if gas prices are high, everything goes high. They had no choice, Mr. Speaker. They had no choice in an effort to sleep properly at night to increase pensioners' income and fast-track minimum wage policy. Now, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I don't want anybody on the opposite side to believe or misunderstand me that the minimum wage policy is critical and it is very necessary. But it is very heartbreaking, Mr. Speaker, that how some of our pensions had to pensioners have to struggle to make end meet. And this should not be as a result, Mr. Speaker, of the government not being able to do something. And I can assure you, Mr. Speaker, that this increase that the government will be providing to the pensioners, Mr. Speaker, will be suffocated by if they continue to keep the gas prices at, at, at the rate that, that, that you're keeping. Okay, Mr. Speaker? Everything else, everything else, bread, transport, everything else. Doesn't mean it, matter, it doesn't matter about, it doesn't matter. Okay. Mr. Speaker? When members opposite were on this side of the House, I remember very, very clear, clearly they clamored relentlessly for transparency, and rightfully so, Mr. Speaker. However, today, Mr. Speaker, there are so many scenarios where people of St. Lucia have to formulate their own interpretations, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I am calling on the government to be a little more forthcoming with information because I believe, Mr. Me Mr. Speaker, with the provision of more information, it would avoid the speculation which is rife in the country right now. And I believe it is very necessary that additional information, and I'm hoping that the member for Grosile tomorrow will provide us with some additional information as it relates to the NLA loan, because the, 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 the Prime Minister in his budget address indicated that um, the loan would be for the NLA's um, infrastructure policy throughout the island. So I'm hoping that, in addition, Mr. Speaker, I think a little more transparency is required on the whole St. Jude's reconstruction or continuation of construction. And I say that, Mr. Speaker, because the Prime Minister, in his budget address, in his budget address, the Prime Minister spoke to the, the tendering process as it relates to the Saudi Development Fund, the loan. And the Prime Minister indicated that the tenders had to be sent up for no objection. Yet, Mr. Speaker, the following line, the Prime Minister indicated that discussions with the contractor was ongoing. Now, I'm a, little, I'm a little confused. I'm a little confused because if the tenders are ongoing, it means that a, tender, a, a, a contractor has not been organ, um, identified, but you're already having conversations with the contractor. Well, that was not, again, transparency, information. We, in the lack of information, I, we, we are left to speculate. But, Mr. Speaker, you see, and again, with the whole speculation where St. Lucians are saying, is only one person that tender, or one person was invited to tender. You know, that's the kind of speculation you get. And we know under the whole tenders um, uh, um, uh, act, one, one tender is, is, is not accepted. But I'll move on, Mr. Speaker. Yes, Mr. Speaker. There's so much to speak about. Yeah. But Mr. Speaker, permit me. You'll, you'll ask for more time for me. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I will come back to the, 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 the Prime Minister's budget address, but I, I, I thought at this juncture I should swiftly move into my community because there are a couple of things I want to clarify and, and, and address. So, Mr. Speaker, one of the disappointments I had with regards to the 
the, the, the budget address, considering the Prime Minister, you know, spoke so much about infrastructure, and he went on further to say that infrastructure was not just roads, and well, he went and he spoke about a whole set of things. So, Mr. Speaker, I was very, very concerned, and I, I was telling the Minister of Infrastructure that at lunch today, that I really thought in the age that we live in that I would hear a lot more with regards to Wasco's infrastructure. Because, Mr. Speaker, and I'm sure you have heard predictions that the future wars will not be about oil, but water. And our droughts are getting more severe. In fact, Wasco had a, a meeting, a, a, a press conference, I think, yesterday, and they indicated to the, the, the media that the resources are drying up at an even faster rate than before. They gave various figures, Mr. Speaker. And that is scary, Mr. Speaker. You see, especially, you know, and, and, and it's a fact, water is life, Mr. Speaker. And the complaints from our citizenry we hate daily, Mr. Speaker. All over the island, it's very loud, I'm very, very loud, people speaking about the scarcity of water in their pipes. And I understand we're in the dry season, and, 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 and that is understandable, but even out of the dry season, Mr. Speaker, we hear these complaints. And Mr. Speaker, my constituents in Chozel, especially in the community of Saltibus, are suffering, Mr. Speaker. The irony, Mr. Speaker, is that the community of Saltibus is known to be one that's full of waterfalls and rivers, Mr. Speaker. The, the member for Viewfort South, very familiar with that, Mr. Speaker. Okay? Um, and, 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 and Mr. Speaker, I am sure, I am sure you will recall while I was in government, I went on a field trip with some Wasco personnel. And I went to visit the intake in the heart of the forest in Saltibus. And I think I may have spoken about it in this house before. And the, the condition of that intake, when you recognize that that is what is going into people's homes, Mr. Speaker, in, in, in Creole we say it's a quev chair. You know, it, it, it was very, very difficult to accept that that was what our intake was looking like. And I, I believe that intake is an extremely old intake. And I don't think. It, it, I think it has outlived its useful life, Mr. Speaker, to the point where I brought the Wasco personnel even further inland, and we identified a water area, Mr. Speaker, and it was in the dry season, and I can tell you, Mr. Season, Mr. Mr. Speaker, 2019, 2019, 2019-2020. We went, we went into, in a dry season, we went up into the forest in an area, and the water, Mr. Speaker, you could have swear that we, we were in, in, in Alaska, Iceland, one of these places. The amount of water that was flowing down there, Mr. Speaker. You know, and, and oh, I'm coming to that, I'm coming to that. And Mr. Speaker, I indicated to the engineer that accompanied me at the time, I said, could you provide an estimate as to what it will cost for us to run pipes. And in fact, Mr. Speaker, I think I was influenced by an earlier picture I had seen of Sir John carrying pipes in that same salty bus area. Um, and I, and, I, and, I, and I, thought, I, I thought, well, maybe I can duplicate that and I could get the citizenry of salty bus to reduce the cost of the infrastructure and the labor because they were so in dire need of water that we could come together as a community and help carry the pipes to, to, to do the work. Um, uh, 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 an estimate was provided, Mr. Speaker, um, but soon after that, you know, COVID came, and, and I, I, I must tell this house, and a lot of people try to underestimate the effects of COVID, but with COVID coming on the scene, there are lots and lots and lots of things that had to be put on the back burner to address COVID issues. And there are a couple of them I will mention um, during the course of, of, of my contribution, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, I am urging, and, and Mr. Speaker, you know, we have in the gallery um, the, my opponent who went against me, and one of the promises I know she made for the people of Saldibus was, had she been elected, she would have ensured that Saldibus would have had a proper water 
supply, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I understand that while she's not a minister and may not necessarily have a ministry, but I think, Mr. Speaker, and I want to challenge her, I want to challenge her, Mr. Speaker, as a member of the cabinet to put some pressure on her cabinet, at least to get the BNTF 10. Um, the, the members spoke about the BNTF 10 and some of the priority areas, water, okay? I, I want to, yes, to, 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 uh, yes, to ensure that Saldibas can get, you know, something similar to what I was able to get for Victoria, a 100,000 gallon tank, okay, to provide water for the people. So, so I, she, she does not only have influence, you know, in cabinet, you know, she has influence in Wasco as well, Mr. Speaker, so I think she can, so I think she can, she can, I think she, 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 she has some influence, Mr. Speaker. Put on your mic and say that. Put on the mic and say that. Yeah. 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 Mr. Speaker, just to, just to indicate some of the interventions I made with regards to Wasco um, while in office, Mr. Speaker. Um, while, while in office, um, I had the reinstatement of a pumping station at Ponyon, Mr. Speaker. Um, Ponyon is a, 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 an area um, between Morgouge and um, Lewish, Mr. Speaker. And that was to be able to pump water from the Delsa station to be able to service a lot more people who are having water challenges, Mr. Speaker. And we also applied under the BNTF to have gotten an additional water tank in the Victoria area to serve 13 constitu constituencies. Speaker, uh, uh, a point of order, Mr. Speaker. Member for Speaker, the, the member for, for Soldier is misleading the House, Mr. Speaker. In 2004, Mr. Speaker, under the Labour Party, a water policy document was prepared. That water policy document was only updated recently by this current government. But before that, Mr. Speaker, it made a very interesting point to suggest that St. Lucia is a more insecure country, a, a, a more water insecure country in 2019 than it was in 2004. What was it? What was he doing in government in 2019, 2020, 2021 before they lost? Election, Mr. Well, well, that's not a point of order, member. Yeah, uh, sorry, he, I said he's misleading the house, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, but, yeah, but the basis for misleading the house is to ask him what he was doing? No, actually, uh, to ask what was happening at that point in time, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, but that's not, that's not a point of order. Proceed, member. That's the, that's but you see, the, 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 the member was a little too quick to stand because I was just saying some of the WASCO initiatives that I, I did while in, in government. I, I was just speaking to them, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to also indicate, Mr. Speaker, that continuing to speak to some of the initiatives directly WASCO related, that while we were constructing the Salty Bus Road, Mr. Speaker, we identified a number of pipes that were rotten, rusty, Mr. Speaker, and we, and, and we felt that it was in the best interest at the time to change these pipes, Mr. Speaker, and about $500,000 was spent to change pipes, Mr. Speaker. And I also, I'm, since I'm talking about pipes and the Saldibus Road, I want to speak to the Minister of Infrastructure, and I brought it to his attention that there need to be a little more timely cooperation between WASCO and the, and the Ministry of Infrastructure. Because WASCO has gone and dug up the road on the Salty Bus Road, the brand new road, in three areas, Mr. Speaker. And it's been months, and the roads have not been repaired, Mr. Speaker. And the longer they wait, the more they deteriorate, to the point where you get people saying that that is deliberate. And I don't want to think that that is deliberate, Mr. Speaker. I don't want to think so, because it's a simple issue of cutting the road, and patching the road in the areas where Wasco has, has um, dug up the road. Mr. Speaker, I also want to speak to some of the initiatives that the, the government as a whole, when we were in office, did with regards to, to, to Wasco, Mr. Speaker. And you will remember the, 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 the Rodney Bay Road that was being constructed, Mr. Speaker. 
Mr. Speaker, the last administration spent $4.5 million in purchasing pipes and also for the labor component to lay pipes on that, on that road. In fact, we had to stop somewhere in the, in the Harbor Club, just before Harbor Club, because going forward, there would have, have to have been some issues with regards to some land acquisition, Mr. Speaker. But it is a well-known fact, Mr. Speaker, that the, the pipes running up all the way to Capacet, Mr. Speaker, need to be changed. The pipes are available. I know they're, they've been stored somewhere in somewhere by Bose Jude, Mr. Speaker. And all of that, I thought, would have been part of the whole new infrastructure um, thrust, Mr. Speaker, because we really need to address the Wasco issue in St. Lucia urgently, Mrs. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I, I, I want to move quickly to, to Not at all, not at all, not at all. Mr. Speaker, um, not at all. I, I won't touch on. Mr. Speaker, um, I, want to, I want to address the, the, the member for Castries Southeast with regards to some, some matters I wish to bring to his attention, Mr. Speaker, and I really need him to look into it urgently. And I'm surprised that the member for Souffre, Francais Jacques, may not have brought to one to his attention, or maybe she did in cabinet and I was not privy to that. But Chosel Saldibas, Chosel Saldibas, Souffre Francais Jacques, is without a social transformation officer. And Mr. Speaker, I think it's very, very critical, especially with the challenges we have with um, our young people that won't be instituted as soon as possible. It's over a year. It's over a year. In addition, Mr. Speaker, and um, I want to speak directly to the Prime Minister through you, Mr. Speaker, I think the time has come that Shozel have their own STO and Sufre have their own STO because the dynamics of various communities are different. And, you, and, and the STOs have their own challenges, Mr. Speaker. And it is critical, Mr. Speaker, that an STO be put in place as soon as possible to address some of these challenges. Since I'm, 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 I'm speaking on that issue, Mr. Speaker, I, I thought you'd, you'd knock the table for me, you know, Madam Super uh. <laughs> Um Mr. Speaker, since I'm, I'm speaking um, to the member for Castries Southeast, well, through the speaker, I'm, 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 I'm addressing him, yes. I'm addressing him through the speaker. Um, it is important that there be housing accommodation for a number of community-oriented people in the community of Shuzel. Right now, community development officer, social transformation officer who's not even there, welfare officer, they all located in Viewfort to serve Shuzel. Now, Mr. Speaker, you can well understand the challenges that this, even at one point, you had quite a few senior citizens who had to come and sign for their, um, the, 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 how you call it, the allowance that they get. And they had no place to go, Mr. Speaker. They had no place to go. You wanted to go all the way to Viewfort, remember? You know, um, so it, it is important, Mr. Speaker. And, and, and on that point, Mr. Speaker, I will just indicate that we have had, and it's not that we have a lack of space in Shozel to house these people, because we just completed the, the PI Community Center and the Roblo Community Center. It's been over a year, and they're just there. They're not open, Mr. Speaker. And you know, the, 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 um, the contractor handed over the buildings to the government in June last year. And do you know, Mr. Speaker, there's a defect liability period, which ends in June this year. So it means, Mr. Speaker, whenever the government decides to go in and there's any problems, it would have to be at the cost of government. You know, already we are, we're struggling to, 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 to deliver these things. So, Mr. Speaker, I think it's critical. PI Community Center, Roblo Community Center. It is critical, Mr. Speaker, 
that these buildings be commissioned. I am hearing an excuse that it's because they're not insured, so nothing can happen. But it's important, Mr. Speaker, because the communities themselves have a lot of plans. They want to do things, Mr. Speaker, you know, and they cannot get access, Mr. Speaker, because Mr. The, the buildings are closed, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. So, on a point of order? Point of elucidation. Go ahead. Can I, Mr. Speaker? Point of elucidation. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Speaker, I just needed to win. Mr. Yes, Mr. Speaker, I just needed to inform the member that there are only 10 positions of um, 10 positions of, com of STOs. It means that you do not have 17. You have 17 constituencies. Secondly, we have one of the islands with the most STOs. We cannot have one STO per constituency, and, there's a, and they are not employed based on a location. They are traveling officers and allowed to move ar around the place. Um, so this is one point that I'd like to draw. If, if, any, if there's a need to have more STOs, it's something completely different. Um, and I do not think it is necessary. The cost of having STOs would be extremely high and, and absolutely, you know, something that government do not want to take. But I understand the need for having coverage in, those, in all other communities around the island for service providers to do so. Mr. Speaker, before we had less and the officers did cover the, of, um, um, the entire island. So it's a, it's a matter of having the right persons, the right attitude, and persons who are willing to move around the island. Okay, Mr. Speaker. I, Mr. Speaker, you know, you, you, you've heard the song, serious times require serious action. And there are times when we have to do certain things differently to address some of the challenges that we have. And I do believe because of the crisis that we have with regards to various youth um, uh, um, misbehavior uh, 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 and, um, and um, you know the, 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 the whole um, youth deviating to, 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 to illegal areas, Mr. Speaker, that is one area that the government can give pride. In addition to that, Mr. Speaker, you must recall, you must remember, Mr. Speaker, that shows us salty bus, while we not necessarily have the population, but it's one of the largest constituencies. And to have an STO to serve such a large space, Mr. Speaker, is something that you must consider in, in, um, when making some decisions. So while there may be funding for 10, I think, you know, the, 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 the Prime Minister has the ability to, to make a lot of these adjustments, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker, yeah, so I was also would like, I also, Mr. Speaker, through you, advise the, the member for Castries South Southeast, that it is my understanding, and, and I must say that Shozal Saltibas have a very aging population. A lot of the people, you know, Mr. Speaker, are getting up there in age. And as a result of that, there's a lot more pressure. Because a lot of these people depended on their little craft and their little agriculture, their little fishing. And, and they really cannot afford the home care, you know? And I think my constituency may be one of the only constituencies where the numbers have not been increased for the home care program. And it's a struggle. I can tell you, I speak, the, I, I speak to the, 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 the caregivers, and some of them have to serve four, five people a day. You know, the practical, that's, that's a fact. That's a fact. I'm not saying things that that's not true. Maybe it's not happening for you, remember for Den Renoff. But in my community, it is happening, okay? So, Mr. Speaker, I'm saying, Mr. Speaker, that I think, you know, that um, attention must be given to increasing the numbers and to addressing some of the needs of our senior citizens, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I just want to um, speak to my good friend from Miku, North was speaking this morning with regards to um, you know, making certain advancement to accommodate the disabled people, Mr. Speaker. And you know, one of the things that irks me quite a bit, and I, I, I don't know how we can address that to make people have a little more respect for disabled people, Mr. Speaker. But on many occasions, you go to either supermarkets or various places where there are special parkings that have been allocated for disabled people. And you see people who are known to be active sportsmen and women parking there. And Mr. Speaker, you know you can't speak to them because you spoke to them. If you speak to them, you find out about your grandmother and your great-grandmother. You know, Mr. Speaker? So I think that there must come a time where people take these things very, very serious, you know? Um, I was telling, you know, 
uh, a colleague at lunch that, you know, sometimes you want to take people on, but everybody have a phone and they only start recording when they can take advantage of what your actions are, you know, not from the beginning, you know. So, Mr. Speaker, I think these are some of the things that as the, 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 the minister responsible for, and also since you have an affiliation with the police, that, you know, there could be some sort of, you know, monitoring of, 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 of that, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as I'm speaking to um, matters in my community, Mr. Speaker, um, I want to speak very briefly with regards to um, Ministry of Education, my good friend from Denry North, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we, it's, it's a fact, Mr. Speaker, that we know that kids are not coming out of school prepared for the work. Force. A lot of children are, are dropping out of school. A lot of them, even after serving five years at secondary school, they come out not prepared for the workforce. And Mr. Speaker, I think it was under that pretext, you know, um, the last administration, you know, made a huge push um, to, to get the Human Capital Resilience Project going, Mr. Speaker. Um, the, 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 in fact, Mrs. Speaker, I believe even before we left office, the unit was set up and, um, a, a, and a team was put in place. I think um, one of the recommendations was that they should establish centers of excellence, and, and the Sports Academy in Grosley was one of them, and TVET, Agriculture, Performing Arts, these things were to follow, Mr. Speaker. And we had already secured the funding for the huge push in TVET, and that's why I was telling the member for Denry North, I was a little disappointed that he did not provide me, you know, with a little update as to the fact that the PI Secondary School, you know, was um, heading full steam ahead into, into becoming a, a TVET center for construction and the arts. But I'm sure, you know, Mr. Speaker, going forward, he will, he will address that, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, since um, the issue of education there's one area that disappoints me, and, and, I'm, and I'm sure my good friend from Denunov will address that as soon as he gets the first opportunity. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, when I go to my constituency office, there are many, many parents who come to me and they tell me, can I make arrangements for their child to get transport to go to school? Because a lot of shows their children go to school in Beaufort. And I said, but, have you tried the school? They said it's full, and you know, they, they, they cannot afford the private bus. And I thought, but when I was in office, we had increased the school subsidy, and they should have had um, quite a few buses, Mr. Speaker. But then, Mr. Speaker, I, I turn your attention to page 60, second paragraph, and I, I saw something which kind of woke up my antennas. It says, mm -hmm. The, 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 sorry, the Economic and Social Review, 2023, page 60. It says, notwithstanding the increased fuel rebate to registered fishers at a cost of $0.3 million annually, the cost of subsidies dipped by $0.3 million to $5 million in 2023-2024 on account of a decrease in the school bus subsidy. Mr. Speaker, then... I got an other aha moment. So that is why the children of Shuzel Salty Bus are not able to get on a school bus to go to school. Um, so, Mr. Speaker, I'm hoping that my good friend would, 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 would address that, Mr. Speaker. My very good friend, my very good friend. Um, Mr. Speaker, during my, 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 my tenure while in the last administration, one of the things we recognize, Mr. Speaker, that Chosel Soldibus community lacked green spaces. And um, there were certain landmarks in the community that were identified as part of the historical, um, well, the, the historical story of, of the community. And um, in fact, I realize community tourism has been using um, one of the sugar mills extensively in one of their ads, Mr. Speaker. And, 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 maybe, and maybe, Mr. Speaker, we should have some, you know, some, 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 some fee for that, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, one of the things that I did was to acquire 
for the people of Shozel, Mr. Speaker, lands on which the sugar mills had been sitting. In fact, I remember coming, in fact, I didn't see it, but people brought to my attention that a certain talk show came down on me for actually purchasing one of these wind, um, sugar mills, Mr. Speaker, um, from, um, for the people of Shozel Saltibus. I'm very, very happy to know that over the weekend, the, the Earth Day celebrations was held at one of these sites, and from all accounts, it was a very successful um, occasion, Mr. Speaker. We also did some land acquisition in La Pointe del Cé, La Fag, Mr. Speaker. And in fact, Mr. Speaker, the plans in, 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 in some of these um, acquisitions was to empower the community in doing various um, camping programs or, or, or having the place as an area for various functions so that the community could be involved and, 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 um, and, and get involved, Mr. Speaker, and, and, and make some money. So I'm asking the, the, the Minister for Tourism and the member for Castries South to do not let these sites deteriorate, you know, take care of them, um, you know, pay some attention because they, they, they're, they're an area, Mr. Speaker, where a lot of um, people visit, a lot of people take photos, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker and, um, and, and I think it's good for the community, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, under the, the, um, the World Bank, Mr. Speaker, there was a, a, a loan that was approved for three islands, I think St. Lucia, Grenada, and St. Vincent, an EC $40 million loan was approved, Mr. Speaker, and that was to do programs island-wide. And one of the projects that was identified by the last administration was the Shozel Arts and Crafts Center. And I, and I realize it is a project that is about completing, Mr. Speaker, and it is a, a project that was supposed to elevate the whole ex visitor experience in Shozel. They were supposed to have a, a restaurant, um, you know, and create, create various jobs for the community. But the little, the little murmurings um, um, over that, who will be managing this um, facility, Mr. Speaker, and so, I am hoping that there's a very transparent process in terms of um, how this project will work, that the Shozel crafters will be able to play a major role in the running of this facility, Mr. Speaker, because we know some of the sufferings the crafters had gone through. One of the things that we did when we were in office, we identified a number of crafters and we went to their location and we provided funds so that they could have um, built toilets and restrooms so that the visitor experience would have been one which was a little more palatable for our, our guests. And the, the, the whole intention was from visiting the areas where they see how the pottery and the handbags and everything is made, they can then gravitate to the handicraft center and purchase the finished product, Mr. S Mr. Speaker. So I think it's something that, um, you know, we have always boasted the community of Shozel Saldibas as the craft capital, and we have to show it in more than just words, Mr. Speaker, and and, and place a lot more emphasis on it, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to take the time to um, congratulate the members of the Shozel Pro League. I believe, I believe the, the semi-pro league is a, 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 is a good um, project, Mr. Speaker. Um, there's not, I do, I'm not sure if I have sufficient information. I know the, 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 the players are being paid, but I'm not sure as to whether coaches are also being paid for the players to, you know, to give them that sort of um, guidance and, uh, and, 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 and hone their game to an even more skillful um, level, Mr. Speaker. I think there's also the issue of how will revenue be generated by the various communities um, to, 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 to sustain, you know, that. And, and, and for a long time now, we've been speaking about the Lafag playing field, you know, being um, cordoned off or, 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 or um, made into a sort of a mini stadium so that um, so I'm sure you will provide me with some additional information um, I continue I continue to speak to I continue to speak to the, the issue of the lights um, the member the member for Grosley has promised me that the lights will be 
fully functional before the end of the year. And, I, and I'll, hold him to, I'll, I'll, I'll hold him to that, Mr. Speaker, um, because there's so many activities that can take place on, on, on that field, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I, I, permit me to speak to, and, and the member for Castries North may want to pay attention to this. Permit me to speak to, or to read from the opening remarks of a statement made by the member for Castries North in October 2023. And it began, and I just read a, a, a portion of it, not much, Mr. Speaker. He says, Mr. Speaker, Permit me this opportunity this morning to address the pressing issue of road infrastructure in our country. Mr. Speaker, our road network is the acute link of our economy, connecting communities, facilitating trade, underpinning social services, and enabling the movement of people and goods on a daily basis. However, a major section of our road infrastructure is severely stressed and fatigued, and it is evident that it is in dire need of increased attention and investment. Our roads are plagued by congestion, which hampers productivity and contributes to increased fuel consumption and, by extension, pollution. The significant delays on our highways and byways imposes severe strain on economic activities. Hence, it is imperative that we consider investing in the expansion of existing roads, constructing new highways, and in the very near future, the implementation of intelligent transportation systems to alleviate congestion and improve the flow of traffic. So, Mr. Speaker, my thing is, is that a revelation or is that common sense? Mr. Speaker, because you see, why I say that, Mr. Speaker, is when the last administration was taking on some major road infra infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, you know, there was so much political mischief and, and, and psychological warfare. And you want one? People do it roads. People do it roads. That was... That was a mantra. People don't eat roads, Mr. Speaker. Today, Mr. Speaker, today, Mr. Speaker, the population wholesale, wholesale, Mr. Speaker, has denounced the actions and words of the opposition back then. Mr. Speaker, I hope after making that statement, the Minister of Infrastructure still gives me my due. Remember, you have 15 minutes left. 15? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to identify a few roads for the member for Castries North, Minister of Infrastructure. Mr. Speaker, the ring road from Debrel to Myers Bridge. While I was in office, Mr. Speaker, there was financial challenges, but we did identify the worst parts of that road, and we engaged a contractor Mr. Speaker, and a lot of work was done on that road, um, Debrel Myers Bridge. The work was done by um, um, BND. Uh, not B how do you call it? Char um, nationwide. Nationwide, yes. But Mr. Speaker, the parts that were good now have come worse. So now we have a situation where, while we had tried to address some of the worst parts, um, the, the good parts have now become worse, Mr. Speaker. Um, we, did, we did do some significant drainage work in the Myers Bridge area, um, and now I believe you know, surfacing of the, the entire ring road is critical. Mr. Speaker, the Gayabwa Opak to Balka Gap, Mr. Speaker, is another road that's in dire, dire need of um, attention. The member for Beaufort North, Beaufort South, is very, very, very familiar with the road, and uh, it, it brings back childhood memories, so every now and then he would drive on it, Mr. Speaker. But his last encounter, he told me his four-wheel drive could not make it because they, it is bad that bad. The 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 gullies are, you know. I must give thanks to the to the to the member for Denris for 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 Beaufort South in that while he was prime minister, he did engage in drainage from the top of Gayabwa all the way down uh, to Tetmon. You did, and 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 we're very grateful for that. But um, you know. The, 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 the gap between putting on the road was a little too long, and now we're suffering significantly. Um, 
One of the challenges, and the Minister for Infrastructure have recognized it, is that because of the amount of water that has washed off the, the, the top surface of that road, um, the, the, the drains are so much higher, and that poses a significant challenge. When we were concreting a part of that road, what we did to save costs, or to rather not save costs, but to push the, the limits of the amount that was available, we used a government um, pumice site for, for, for base material, and that did enable us to go a little further than what was originally contracted. So I suggest that, you know, it is something that you can, you can do, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I also want to speak to the Monjak through Cafe Road, Mr. Speaker. There's a school in Cafe, in, in, in Amdiga, and a lot of people use that road to take their children to school, Mr. Speaker, and this road it has some potholes that are very, very, very um, hard to maneuver, Mr. Speaker. The Grace Road in Saldibus, Mr. Speaker, better known as Pak Kabwit, um, is also a road, Mr. Speaker, that should be paid attention to. The Devil Bridge Road, we know the history of that, of that, um, of that, 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 that area, very historic, can be used in the whole community tourism um, thrust, Mr. Speaker. Pont George. George, that's right, Pont George, yes. Pont George. Pont George, well, well, I was going to give a story about your family and, 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 and you know, your, 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 was it your father or your grandfather? My grandfather. His grandfather. His grandfather was, 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 was tasked with the job of building that bridge. And they said his, the bridge was so difficult or rather impossible to build that his grandfather had to make a, make a pact with the devil. And the pact through the devil was that the first human or the first living, living thing to cross that bridge becomes mine. And it so happened that his grandfather had a dog to pass over the bridge. So the devil got the soul of a dog. Um, it's, it's a history that's well known in Chosel, Mr. Speaker. And, and, and um, you know, and um, Mr. Speaker, you know, I think it's, you know, we have to look at these historical um, 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 areas, Mr. Speaker, in terms. There's also a very small road, I think, um, Minister of Education, you should pay much attention to it because it's a road that leads to your district education office, okay? Um, Mr. Speaker, um, that road is, is, is in a real bad situation. And last but not least, Mr. Speaker, because if I have to mention in Lafargue, if I have to mention all the roads in Chosel that, that need attention, but I'm trying to, to hone in on some of the most significant ones. And um, the, the Cedars Road, Mr. Speaker, Cedars Road, and my good friend would be happy to know that we've identified that road as one of the roads that need priority. Um, <laughs> the Cedars Road, Mr. Speaker, Cedars Road. Um, you know, the road, the road, the road is, um, you know, well known as Chutig, and the member for Castro Central, he, he knows that area very well, Mr. Speaker. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I invite you to, to Lafag, Mr. Speaker, to view a land development that was done during my tenure, Mr. Speaker, I think it's one of the best developments ever done by Invest and Lucia, um, where we, we, de we develop 114 lots, Mr. Speaker, and we have some beautiful houses going up on there right now. In addition, there were another 20 lots that were done by the Ministry of Housing, Mr. Speaker, and, um, you know, very, very good infrastructure, and I'm hoping that with all of the other land developments that have been done, you replicate that concrete. concrete. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I, I want to speak to the whole issue of fishing and agriculture. Um, you know, my good friend. And we um, have six minutes left. Six minutes, Mr. Speaker. You know, um, I always tell my good friend, the Minister of Agriculture, that when he's... I have a lot of friends. You have friends everywhere, you know? Um, except one, except one. <laughs> Mr. 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 Speaker, um, despite significant investments in agriculture, Mr. Speaker, we recognize that the sector declined by 17%, and I think that's something we need to pay serious attention to. Um, I know the farmers are catching their royals right now in the dry season. Um, I'm happy to have all of what is going to come for the agricultural sector, but I think we need to pay very attention, because there's still a very, very large population that depend on agriculture for their livelihood, 
and we should never, never let that, that industry or that sector, Mr. Speaker, um, you know, die. Um, I always tease the Minister for Agriculture Fisheries that when he's speaking about the various fishing ports, he does not give credit where credit is due with regards to the Chozel fish port. He always speaks to it, you know, very flittingly, Mr. Speaker. But I think it's up because I got some pressure from my constituents that I need to say, you know, what happened with regards to that fishing port. Because you remember, Mr. Speaker, there was a non-ending story. Every day, HTS, Desmond Colimo had to come and, and, and interview fishermen with regards to the difficulty they were facing, Mr. Speaker. And when we came in office, one of the things I told the Minister of Agriculture, we need to address that. Um, he said to me, but as far as you know, the Japanese have put up their hands on that already. They say they finished with this thing because they gave us a, an excavator and a, a, a pickup, and, and that was never used. But we persevered, Mr. Speaker, and we went to Japan sometime in, in, no, in November 2019, Mr. Speaker. And I, if I tell you, um, while I suffered significantly because I did not prepare for that kind of coal, um, and maybe, maybe the officials felt sorry for me because I couldn't even speak. It was so cold that they decided, yes, 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 we'll give you what you asked for. And the funds were given to us, the funds were given to us in two tranches. Um, the first tranche was extensive, the silting and, uh, and a finger um, pair, well, not necessarily a pair, but well, it's not a pair, but it was out of stones. And, um, and the, second, the second phase would be the, the ground and a proper finger pair um, to assist the fishermen. The second phase um, is happening now, a significant activity in the community, um, providing some good economic activity, Mr. Speaker, and I'm hoping that it will be complete very, very soon, Mr. Speaker, and we will have, you know, um, a proper, um, a, a, what you can call an example for people to come and see as to, the, you know, the work that was done in, in, in the area, Mr. Speaker. Yes, the, the Minister for Infrastructure did send one of his engineers to Japan with me. Yes, you did, you did. Yes, yes. Um, Mr. Speaker, um, I want to close by, um, well, I want my, my, my good friend to give me 10 minutes, if I stick so long. Invoke, invoke section two. Mr. Speaker, um, the youth economy, Mr. Speaker. A lot has been said about the youth economy, and it is an extremely um, good thrust. And I believe the Prime Minister, with his political experience, took advantage of a foundation that was left. And I must say that. He took advantage of a foundation that was left. And why I say that, Mr. Speaker? because he recognized some of the incentives that had been created under the Adjustment to the Fiscal Incentives Act, Mr. Speaker, and realized that, you know what, we can create a whole new economy out of what has been put in place. And Mr. Speaker, I just want to remind the House, the Parliament, of some of the things that happened, you know, in that area, Mr. Speaker. Because when we, when we changed the Fiscal Incentive Act, at the time, there were only two areas that was getting incentives from the government, agriculture and tourism. And we decided, Mr. Speaker, we had to open that up, um, service sector, Mr. Speaker. And we, we looked at a number of areas, professional services, which included accounting services, management consultancy services, photographic services, architectural services, engineering services, integrated engineering services, printing and publishing services, veterinary services, medical and dental services. Under the creative industries, we had the motion picture projection service, entertainment service, sporting and other recreational service, motion picture projection and videotape production and distribution services. Under information and communication technology, telecommunication services, online information, and our data processing, including transaction processing. Under spa and wellness, beauty and spa, physiotherapist services provided by midwives and paramedical personnel and medical laboratories. All of these services, Mr. Speaker, are now able to bring in raw material, equipment for their, um, their businesses, um, uh, you know, any technical um, you know, um, infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, under customs duty and excise duty free, Mr. Speaker. And as I said, a lot of them are young people involved in it, young people. So that's why I say, Mr. Speaker, and the Prime Minister will agree, he, used, he took the advantage of it. And I think that's where, you know, continuation is in effect. So kudos to you for, and I can also offer you, you know, some additional advice whenever you. 
Mr. Speaker, in closing, in closing, Mr. Speaker, I want to quote the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister's budget address, Mr. Speaker, page one. Um, sec, um, third paragraph, second line before the last. The Prime Minister says, we must therefore, as a government, fight this disrespect and contempt for the citizens of this country, wherever and whenever it is manifested. I urge the Prime Minister to take out the word government and use we must therefore as a country. Because, Mr. Speaker, I say that, Mr. Speaker, because every day, every day, we see citizens from both sides of the fence lashing out insults, all kind of abuses, Mr. Speaker. And, Mr. Speaker, we as the parliament, Mr. Speaker, and, I, and I, 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 I told the Prime Minister that, you know, in a private conversation while we were walking down the stairs, I said to him, he needs to say this to every occasion that he goes to, every Monday in cabinet, every opportunity he gets, he needs to speak this. Because if he continues to say that, Mr. Speaker, people will get the message. We heard, we heard from the, 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 act, the group recently to fight crime and some other people were speaking. And they said you a lot of crime that is caused in St. Lucia is as a result of disrespect. So the disrespect thing, Mr. Speaker, is a serious thing, you know? And we need to learn, Mr. Speaker, to live as one, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I don't want to, 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 to ask for more time, Mr. Speaker, but just, you know, I was very surprised my good friend, Mr. Speaker, very, very good friend, and my mentor at one point in time, maybe still, you know, although she's in the political and, and, and the other side of the house, the member for Souffre Francais Jacques, Mr. Speaker. We had, a, we had a long working relationship. And I was surprised, Mr. Speaker, that she started her contribution with a scorecard. Uh, she started her contribution with a scorecard, Mr. Speaker. And I mean, I could come with a scorecard too, Mr. Speaker. But you know, there are two glaring things that came out to me when she was doing her scorecard, Mr. Speaker, um, when she was comparing Jen and us is that the last administration reduced VAT by 2.5%, and this administration imposed a health and security levy of 2.5%, Mr. Speaker. Just that alone, Mr. Speaker, speaks volumes about the scorecard. But I was also happy, Mr. Speaker, that you mentioned the business incubator, the business incubator, because I remember when I was going up in 2016, and I spoke to constructing a warehouse to provide young people with it. I was, I was given all kind of mepui, Mr. Speaker, when we came into office speaking to Invest and Lucha, they said there were a lot of legislative procedures to, 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 to address a business incubator. So I'm happy that work is finally going to, to bring this to fruition. Mr. Speaker, there are a number of projects that the Prime Minister spoke about um, that I believe um, was not quite um, genuine in terms of saying that it was projects of this administration. I think a lot of it started under under our reign, Mr. Speaker, but we'll have time to deal with that at another, another time, Mr. Speaker. You know, Mr. Speaker, one of them, one of them I want to remind the Prime Minister was that the Headquarters Act, the Headquarters Act was, was an initiative of the last administration because remember, Mr. Speaker, when we just came in, we had difficulties with the European Union. We were on a gray list and a black list and all kinds of things, Mr. Speaker. And we had some serious adjustment to do to our tax regime, Mr. Speaker. And um, coming out of that, the Headquarters Act was one of those that we did. And I must say, a lot of people are taking advantage of it. I believe the latest now is Republic Bank taking advantage of the Headquarters Act. I believe it's a good thing. We need to encourage a lot more um, um, entities to come in. DigiCell is another one, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I thank you for giving me a little leeway. And I thank the House for um, listening. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.